Welcome to this tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how you can use use effect and basically I'm just going to explain it and I'm going to try to go as quick as possible just so I can get everything encapsulated. So I have this simple piece of application here that has two pizza cards. I have a button that updates this state. Don't worry about that. The only things I want you to focus on are these elements right here. So this bit right here is all you have to focus on. So from line 16 down to 53. So as mentioned, two buttons, two cards. We have this first use effect here. So let's refresh this and see what happens. So here we are. We have a bunch of stuff going on in the console. And let's just look at how this works. So with use effect, there's multiple ways to use it. And the first one is this one right here. So let's take a quick look. So this one is just a standard use effect. This one will run on every render. So if you're not too familiar with React, renders happen, you know, things can change, numbers, state. And what I want to show you is if I just clear out the console, I can force a state update and you will see that this runs on every render. So there you are. I will run on every render correlates to this one right here. The most basic one and it render well reruns on every render. The next one is this one right here. So if we refresh, what's happening with this is that you see the difference is this, well, empty array. This empty array is saying I will run on the first render. So we can see that by refreshing and you'll see welcome to my pizza shop. I will run on the first render and if I force a state update, we don't see the yellow one. So that is basically not going to run again unless we do a refresh and you can see it one more time right here and then you can see the set timeout goes and hides it so if we go to the first one that runs on every render this one with the empty rear runs on the first render the next one is a use effect with an array but it has a value inside so if we take a look at this value, it is toggle. Toggle is this button here. It toggles back and forth between showing and hiding the pizzas. We can see that value is down here. We have some state, which is, just zoom out a bit, which is here. So we can change the value. And the way we do that is by hitting set toggle. And we pass in the previous value and then we switch out the current value. So if it's true, we flip it by using the exclamation mark and goes to false. If it's false, we flip it and go to true. We can see it happening here. There we are, we've hidden them. So what happened? Well, if we look in a console, I will run every render. This is this use effect here. The next one is I will run on first render and every time toggle changes. So let's have a look for that one. This is the third one. So as you can see, we're targeting toggle. Any any thing that goes inside the array, basically we're saying, watch this. If it changes, run the use effect. So that's number three. The next one is a slightly trickier one because what this one does is it cleans up, um, let's say, side effects. So it, it's a fairly hard one to explain, but basically you can have it like the others. You can make it go ahead and run on each render, or you can pass in a, an empty array and just get it on the first render. So if we just refresh and just see where we're currently at, I can you know toggle pizzas back and forth, and you can see this. I will run on every render, I will run on first render, and every time toggle changes, I will run on first and every render. We'll look at that one shortly, but if I just go back, let's see all the different versions here. We have the f every render, I will run on the first render. So you may have seen this. This one's come through twice. So why did that come through twice? Well, I will run on first render, which is here. And then if we take a look at set show welcome, that's updating state. So that's going to go ahead and say, do a re-render. So when that set timeout's done, it gets rid of the welcome to my pizza shop. And then React is like, well, we just had a change in state. So we need to re-render. And that's what it's done. So let's see, I will run on first render and every time toggle changes. So on this one here, let's see, I will run on first render. That's right with the empty rear. And this one I will run on first render and every time toggle changes. So you can see 
it ran here. Toggle has not changed, but if I hit the toggle, you get the blue one coming through. I hit it again, it comes through again. Likewise, one more time, clear that out. And if I just force a generic state update, you will get the, I will run on every render because it's gonna run on every render. And then I will run on first and every render. That is this one here. Now, a good example of a cleanup is, like I said, a side effect. So if you're using something like Firebase, maybe you're using some AWS services. And one of the examples that I like to use is this is a Firebase one. And you don't generally use these within components because there's not much to clean up. I like to put them in hooks. So if you maybe have a chat, ser um, a chat service, something you're subscribing to, you generally want to clean it up. So here I'm just doing it on the first, I'm doing it on the first initial render and then I'm um, initializing this listener. And then once the listener is done with, and say so this hook gets removed, I go ahead and basically clean up <laughs> this listener. But yeah, that's it. Um, hopefully that was you know, fairly clear um, and hopefully I didn't go through it too fast, but these are the differences in use effect. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.